the Zargon. So this is going to be a uh, video response to your uh, classified video that you made a little while back. Uh, first off, let me just say I'm, I'm a huge fan. Uh, I am subscribed to you. I, uh, I love everything you're doing. You've stopped doing um, all of your videos on feminism and uh, government and uh, social justice, all that. I mean, you were pretty much. Um, we're, we're on point with that. We agree fully. Uh, and I think the work you're doing is valuable and uh, is definitely something that needs to keep being done. Um, not just by you, but by other people as well. Um, let me also say that, let me first also apologize for the shitty quality of this video. Uh, my computer's down right now, so I'm not going to have a lot of graphs and, you know, uh, graphics and uh, articles that I can put on the screen. Uh, but uh, as a historian and as a, um, a, a very very intelligent researcher, I think that you'll be able to uh, to, to find what I'm, you know, any sources you might want to uh, look into as far as what I'm saying here. Uh, I like to I like to film outside, so I'm sorry about the background noise. Um, I don't think it's, it's going to be too annoying. I'll have to watch the video after I film it to see if it's absolute crap because of all the, the background noise. Uh, so I apologize about that as well. Uh, the next thing is, is I, I am actually American. Um, I fought in the Middle East. Uh, for, I, was, I was an infantryman for the U.S. Army, and uh, I, I fought just outside of Baghdad uh, from 04 to 05. Uh, that is not to say that I am a super patriot. I mean, I guess I, guess I you can go as far as to say I'm a patriot, but the, the idea that I, I care about the American people and I will fight for the American people, but I, I by no means, uh, you know support everything the government is doing. I actually agree with you on everything, almost everything that you put in your video. Um, I don't, uh, I didn't find any points that that you made that could be, you know, really incredible. Uh, I think a lot more people should think like you, especially with what's going on with the police and uh, with, with, with the, you know, the, uh, the uh, imperial, uh, the imperial status that the, the U.S. has taken on. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I think we're on the same page with a lot of it. But, uh, I mean, I, I just, I kind of wanted to have fun with this and uh, see what your thoughts are. Uh, you, you, uh, you're you basically saying that the U.S. could, you know, take on the entire world, or at least that's their, that's their goal. And I, I don't disagree with that either. I think that that's what they're gearing up for. The facts are pretty clear. Uh, or at least the signs are pretty clear. Um, and I mean, it, it might not be that, but I think it's, it's more likely that, that you are correct on that. However, I wanted to, um, uh, the thing I wanted to touch on is is the, uh, the point you're making about being able to take on the entire world. Um, I think the U.S. absolutely wants to have that image that they can, and I think they want to actually be able to do that, but as far as being able to, and I know you said they may not be able to do it yet, so don't, don't get me wrong. I, you know, I, I did pay attention to that. Um, but I don't, I don't think that they would be able to go that far. Um, now, if you go back to, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you some of my reasonings on it. Again, I don't have, you know, a bunch of charts. It's not going to follow the same flow that you had on your video, because again, my computer's down, and it's damn near impossible to, you know, go back and do a, a pretty, you know, um, uh, in-depth video when you, you only have an iPhone to work with. So I'm, I'm just going to use uh, use words and hopefully this translates well. Uh, so if you go back to World War II, um, the Allies, uh, they, they basically won due to due to industrial might, as, as I'm sure you're aware. I mean, the, the, their industrial might was was just mammoth. It was unstoppable. We just, we just kept producing war machine after war machine and we just kept producing uh, basically all these new technologies that kind of blew up all over the world when the World War II came out due to necessity, which I guess that's, I mean, that's a pretty good reason, I would say. Um, so yeah, they, they, I think we can all agree that the Allies definitely won due to military military might. Now, um, here's, here's, here's the part that kind of goes along with what you're saying. Um, Hitler 
was towards the end of the war was kind of in the same position that you're talking about the U.S. being in. Um, he had almost every country in his grasp, um, almost, uh, almost that is. Um, Russia, the U.S. definitely turned the tide, but I'd say the, the, the nation that, that really turned the tide of that war was Russia. Once Russia hit the scene, um, I mean, that made D-Day look like a, like a cakewalk. It was, as, as I'm sure you, you are already aware. Um, now, the Nazis, their racist tendencies actually uh, limited them quite significantly. If, I, I think that if they didn't have, um, at least for as far as the war effort goes, if they weren't so strict on their racial, um, on their racial requirements, I, I think they, they may have just won that war. Now, if you turn that around and put, put the U.S. in the same spot, if the entire world is against the U.S., the U.S. doesn't need to be racist. They're just not going to have any allies. Um, it's going to be kind of the same thing that Hitler was going through on his own because of his own devices, but it's, it's going to, we're not going to have a choice. We're, we're not, in, in the scenario you painted, we're not going to have the choice to have allies because all of our allies in that situation would have abandoned us. Now, so, I mean, I think... I think we basically are in the position that Hitler was in before the, you know, the, the, the war majorly took took a turn for the worse for, for Adolf Hitler. Um, so I think with that in mind, I, I think that would give us quite a bit of, um, you know, limitations. It's, it's going to weaken us significantly. Um, Vietnam would be the next the next uh, example I would I would use. Now the. The U.S., I mean, this is up for debate whether the U.S. lost or won the war. I mean, people, usually hardcore patriots say, oh, we won, we won Vietnam. But, I mean, everybody else is like, no, we fucking didn't. Viet Vietnam was a total loss. Um, now, he, the reason I'm using Vietnam as an example is because we had vast superior technology compared to the, to the Viet, you know, compared to the Vietnamese. Um, and we still had the struggle even to stay on an even plane. Um, granted, we were on their own turf, and they were the ones defending. So they they, they had that natural tendency to fight, you know, a lot harder, um, arguably, than, than we did as a whole. Um, so I think I think if you look at it, um, you, you're, you're, this kind of goes into what you were saying about U.S. technology. Our technology is is just vast, and it just continues to get better and better. Um, I mean, if, I, I know this was back in the late 60s, but I mean, it was still kind of the same thing. We had so much more technology uh, compared to Vietnam that we, we, that we, we should have just wiped them off the map. Um, and, uh, and again, their, their, their will to fight and their, their tech, techniques that they're willing to employ to win the war were so much more effective than ours. Um, I'd, like to, I'd like to read a, uh, a monologue from uh, from uh, uh, Apocalypse Now with Marlon, uh, Marlon Brando's monologue in Apocalypse Now. He says, horror as a face, you must make a friend of horror. Horror and moral terror are your friends. Hold on, I'm Okay, so he says, horror as a face, and you must make a friend of horror. Horror and moral terror are your friends. If they are not, then they are true. Then they are truly enemies to be feared. But oh, they are enemies to be feared. They are truly enemies. I remember when I was with special forces. It seemed like a thousand centuries ago. We went into a camp to inoculate the children. We left the camp after we had not we inoculated the children for polio, and this old man came running after us. And he was crying. He couldn't see. We went back there, and he had hacked off every inoculated arm. There they were in a pile, a pile of little arms. And I remember I cried. I wept like some grandmother. I wanted to tear my teeth out. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I want to remember it. I never want to forget. And then I realized, like I was, like I was shot, like I was shot with some diamond, a diamond bullet right through my forehead. And I thought, my God, the genius of that, the genius, the will to do that, perfect, genuine, complete, crystalline, pure. And then I realized they were stronger than me they could stand that. These were not monsters. These were men. They trained contraries. These were men who fought with their hearts, with families, with children, who were filled with love, but they still had the strength to do that. If I had ten divisions of these men, our troubles here would be over very quickly. You have to have men who are moral, and at the same time, are willing to utilize their primordial instincts to kill without feeling 
without passion, without judgment, because it's judgment that leads us. Now, I'm not saying that to be dramatic. I'm pointing out the fact that he was right. The reason that the VC was so effective at what they did was because they were willing to do pretty much anything it took to win that war. Anything. Including the horrors that were, were painted there. And things that were much worse if you look back in history. Uh, now, what American... I mean, there, there, are, there are some brutal Americans. I mean, there are quite a few Americans that are, are willing to, to do stuff like that. But uh, as a whole, we are, we, we are not willing to to go to those extents. I don't care I, I don't care who it is. Um, I don't know, that's kind of contradictory. Um, as I said, there are people like that. But uh, again, as a whole, we are not willing to do that. We're not willing to go to those extreme lengths just to, you know, just to, to send a message. A lot of other countries are, and if we're at war with the entire world, um, that, that kind of includes those who are willing to go to those depths. Um, we're not willing to do that. We, it doesn't matter if, you know, NATO's involved. It doesn't matter if um, uh, the UN isn't, isn't involved. Um, it, it doesn't matter. Our, our people are not willing to go to those, to, those, to those lengths when a lot of other countries, unfortunately, are. But he was right. That's that's what it takes in some cases is, is that mentality. And I, 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 in my opinion, a lot of Americans just don't have that. I was again. I fought in Iraq. I, I, I could never, ever go to those you know go to those extremes. And most of the people I fought with could not go to those extremes. I, I don't think I met a single person that would. Um, and I was I was in a combat unit. Um, it doesn't get much more brutal than that. Um, now. Another reason we didn't we didn't win in Vietnam is we weren't willing to use nuclear weapons. If, if we if we use nuclear weapons to cut off their supply chain, um, or or any other reason, just we could have just leveled the place. But again, that, that goes into the, the same monologue. We're we're not willing to go to those extents. We 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 learned our lesson when we when we used nuclear weapons uh, on Japan. Um, we we learned that I mean we should we should have already known better. But we when we did that, I mean we, it really showed us you know. Yeah, yeah, we sent a message, but at the same time, do we really want to go to these extents? Now, that's not to say that the U.S. government wouldn't do that. If we were threatened by the whole world, yeah, the government would probably would probably be okay with going to those lengths. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I, I guess I guess I, I that, that's kind of just a waste of time bringing up the nuclear nuclear argument. Um, I'll, I'll just leave that one alone. Again, I, I can't really edit on this iPhone, so I'm sorry about that. Um, now. You mentioned drones, uh, that we have 800 drones, um, but th those actually can be shot down. Um, Russia has missiles that can shoot, that they've, they've uh, created to shoot drones down. Um, there's actually a big controversy uh, about, about that. Um, I'll let you, if you want to look into that, can. Uh, China has laser cannons that can actually shoot drones down. And China, um, I read a few reports, I'd have to do a little bit more digging around to see how true it is, but it sounds pretty legit, uh, that China is, is might be developing 42,000 drones. Um, so if, if, if we do, I didn't check, but if we do have the 800 drones that, that you said we do, um, those aren't much against you know, the, the thousands and thousands that China is considering creating. Uh, maybe you meant 800,000 drones. I should have known a little research on these before I made this video. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, now, uh, now, some, now, now, you mentioned naval naval superiority that we, we own most of the uh, most of the the aircraft carriers, you know, in the world, and that's great. Aircraft carriers dominate the sea, um, but I mean, you didn't really take into account uh, submarines, and now. I read a report that said that um, America has the strongest, um, that, that the GFP uh, made, made a chart of, of submarine strength. America ranked at the top at 72. North Korea was just under that at 70, and Russia was just under that at 67. Now, individually, we're, we're on the same playing field with those two countries, but if, if, if it was against the entire world, um, even those two countries combined would, would outrank us in submarine might. And that's that's nuclear submarines. That's um, that's pretty much just a, a, a gaggle of all of them put together. Um, and that's not to mention all the other ones, the, the UK, um, you know, all these other countries that have a high uh, 
submarine strength. Uh, so that's you, you know you 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 mentioned you mentioned aircraft carriers. I'll, I'll mention submarines. I, I didn't even really do anything with battleships. I'm sure that's a whole other discussion alone. Um, another reason I don't think the U.S. would be able to 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 pull you know pull off take down the entire world is because the U.S. heavily relies on its allies. I mean, when was the last conflict we won without allies? Even the small ones. We even you know. Uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom. We we had the UK, uh, Canada even stepped in for a little while. Um, I mean, what, what conflict have we ever won with without allies? And even with allies, I mean, it takes years and years and years to, to really say that we've actually won a conflict. Um, we, we usually it's it's a struggle that you keep territory. Um, so yeah. Um, there's also, I mean, if you look at it, also Intel. I mean, if we have we have agents and um, Intel uh, experts in other countries all the time, um, people would be foolish to suspect that we do not have espionage agents overseas. Who's to say that they, don't, they also don't have them here? I think we would be foolish to think that the U.S. hasn't has not been infiltrated by espionage agents or just uh, uh, intel, intelligence agents. Um, I mean, we, we, we have to take into account that if we're going to be making military moves, um, there's going to be people who are going to also be able to intercept those plans, and, and it's going to change the game significantly. I mean, on paper, yeah, it, say we were playing a game of risk, and, and the U.S. had um, their forces in all of these countries that you pointed out, how we've surrounded, uh, we've surrounded Russia, um, Asia is surrounded by the sea. Uh, by our forces in the sea and say we were playing a game of risk I mean yeah on, on the board yeah that would be it's a straightforward game all the rules stay the same but when you take into effect counterintelligence um, you know it, it, billions and billions of dollars that are spent on each country's intelligence agencies that's going to change the game significantly um, so it's not it, it's not going to be a straightforward conflict um, like you like you painted and I'm 100% I'm, I'm sure that you've all, you, you know this um, but, uh, and again, I know that you said that the U.S. Uh, isn't capable of taking over the whole world yet. Um, and I know that your main point is that the U.S. is trying to take over the world. But I wanted to kind of have fun with this and, and send this video to you to see, you know, what your thoughts were on these points about if, if it actually came down to it. Um, if, if the U.S. actually had the ability to carry out its plans at this point in the world of world domination. You made the you made the claim that, that the U.S. can cannot be contended with on any playing field. I would definitely have to disagree um, with that. If hold on, nasty habit. Mentioned the military bases as tripwire as tripwire bases, which is absolutely. They are there to hold off an invasion until something happens, or until they can get reinforcements there, until they come up with a plan of action or a QRF force to get out there. Um, that's very true. That's that's why they're there. Um, but again, if, if if a country did invade and attack one of these tripwire uh, tripwire installations, and say the entire world was against us, um, the, the U.S. isn't going to really have an ability to get out there fast enough. If, if the UN can conglomerate a, a huge master plot to, to overthrow us, those those bases would yeah they would be they they would set we would know those bases were being uh, overrun. But you don't think that there would be forces also cutting off whatever forces we sent after them after the invading force. Um, I, I I don't I don't think it would be a standalone operation if the entire world was against us. Uh, I mean. Even our, even our heavy, highly, uh, even the fact that we highly rely on internet to, to basically control everything, uh, it's been proven that other countries they, they they've kind of uh, gone against that logic. There's, there's other counter uh, measures in place uh, in case internet goes down. I mean, the U.S. has them as well, but I, I haven't seen any proof uh, that that would show that we, we would really have an effective means of. of acting as fast as we should, um, whereas some of these less advanced nations that are, that is not to say that their military might isn't, isn't uh, significant, um, 
they 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 tend to rely on their internet communication less. Uh, now that's something that can be debated, um, but I mean I think if you just do any Google search, you'll you'll be able to find that information online. Um, I think you're right that we do have uh, a monetary advantage, um, but but in open war, I, I against the entire world, I, I don't think that's going to uh, help us as much as uh, one might assume. Now, it's also been argued that if the U.S. were invaded, then everybody would fight. I always hear the same argument that if the U.S. invaded, everybody would take up weapons and fight because we don't take that shit. No, look at any mass shooting. Look at look at any violent conflict um, with you know on our own soil. Our, we're soft. Our country has become extremely soft. I think if if someone were to get far enough to get boots on the ground, we would cave. Uh, there would be some places like in the south uh, where highly populated areas where people did have firearms and they would fight back but if, it, if a full blown army, actual military might, you know, we put with full military might actually invaded I think most people would be so terrified that they would just cave, they, they wouldn't they wouldn't know what to do against a fully armed force um, I mean yeah we have the National Guard and we have other military you know, personnel that and we also have police forces that would put up a fight, but I, I think if there were boots on the ground, I think our people would, would cave. One, one advantage we do have is we have the, the sheer size of our, of our country, you know, the entire continent. Um, if, uh, if if someone did invade, they would have a hell of a time taking over the entire country. It's, it's just so big, um, and there's a lot of flat lands and, you know, places that aren't really worth, um, you know, spending much time. Never mind, I'm, I'm kind of rambling now. But uh, yeah, I, I would like to know what you think about this. Um, hopefully, hopefully I can I can grab your attention and, and see what you think. Um, again, I, I really respect what you do. Uh, yeah, I, I respect you as a historian. I respect you as a um, as politically uh, the work you're doing against social justice and the the facts that you're pointing out about how our world's becoming very Orwellian and. Um, scary future you're, you're you're showing us that is definitely on its way is 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 something you need to keep exploiting I think not exploiting I expect I think um, and uh, yeah keep up the good work and um, thank you for listening my name is amphibian boss and um, have a good evening